Here is our 171cc big bore kit. So this is a stock uh, cylinder. You notice the difference in size. Not a huge difference, but definitely significant in power. Here's our stock uh, cylinder head. This is the 61 millimeter uh, cylinder head, and it's got bigger uh, porting. It's got different porting in, in the head for better compression. You notice this is not filled up, and this is. And then we've got the uh, camshaft. You notice, if I flip it up, here's the uh, original cam. If you check those lobes out here, in comparison to these ones, so you've got that real long, tall lobe, almost sticks up over the bearing. It's definitely a difference. This, uh, this kit is great because this is as big as you can go without modifying the engine block. So let me show you what I mean. This cylinder will slide right into the engine block. So here I have the fitted 171cc cylinder. I just want to show you that the 171 will fit into your GY6150. It's, it's a little bit of a tight fit, but it's not like hammer it on. So that's what's nice about this is that it'll slide right into the stock engine cases on the GY6. No uh, boring the uh, uh, engine cases, so that's nice. Here's the rolling wrench EFI tuner. If you flip it over, you notice that there's like a bunch of buttons. I'll show you how that all works and what this little knob does. But it'll also come with the little harness. Really super, super easy. So we got a ground here. And then this plugs in line with our fuel injector. Unplug the fuel injector, plug this in the main connector here, and then, then plug that right into where the fuel injector is plugged in. Super easy. So now for the fun part. Let me show you how to use this super sweet rolling wrench EFI tuner. I'll explain all these little buttons. So the unit's not going to power on until I actually start the machine. So let me set that down. I'll get it started. As you can see, it's idling real close to 2,000 RPMs. It's bouncing from 2,100, sometimes 1,900. So this tuner works in 500 RPM increments. So what I want to do is push that middle button. That's the select button. I'm going to go over to 2,000. Now, from there, I can go up or down on the fuel. In this case, I'm just, just for testing purposes, I'm gonna go all the way up. Let's go up like 30, up to 30 percent. What it is? 30 percent more fuel. And then I'm gonna push the enter button in the middle. Now it's really, really rich. So let's let's go back to 2,000 RPM, and we'll do the same thing backwards. At 30 percent less fuel at 2,000 RPMs. I'll just push the middle button to lock it in, just like that. If you notice it changed because it's a lot more lean. So then you can do that, you know, you can do that at 1,000 RPM, 1,500 RPM, 2,000 RPM. It doesn't like that. I'm going to bring it back up to zero feel, just the way it was. There we go. But I, I can do that all the way over to, to show you. All the way up to 10,000, 10, 10 11, 5, 12,000, 12, 5. All the way up to 15,000 RPM. I can tune that. And let me explain this little knob here. Say you got a 150cc GY6 and you've tuned, tuned it perfectly and now you're going for a 170cc. You keep your same tune, all I'm doing is turning this little knob from zeros where we want it set from when we're tuning at first to, you can play with it, to two, to three, to four. You can turn that knob, it opens the injector just a little bit longer so that you'll have the same tune but for the bigger engine. Let me show you one more really cool feature on this tuner. So I'm gonna flip the key on Remember, nothing lights up until the vehicle's been started, but if I push right or left, 
You can go back and forth. See that P1 or P2, P1 and P2? Those are different maps. So you can do a full tune on P1 and then do a completely different tune on P2. So you can save two tunes inside this. Let me show you like the pro way of tuning. So I've got this O2 sensor um, tuning kit. This plugs into the exhaust so I can tell you exactly what the air fuel ratio is. So if you notice on the tune, it's at 14.5. We want it to be more like 13. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, we're at 2000 RPM. I'm gonna get in over at 2000 RPM like that and I'm going to increase the fuel because remember we want more fuel so let's go let's bring the uh, bring this up like 15 percent and I'll push enter and see what happens see that did you see that needle now I'm at 13 that's what we want so as I ride I can monitor that specific rpm and adjust accordingly so as you can see, using the tuner with the wideband sensor is super beneficial. But I will tell you, you can probably get this correct just by feel. But if you are if you want to get it perfect, you're going to need a wideband O2 sensor. So once your tune is complete, literally you can just tuck this guy away, make sure things aren't touching buttons and stuff, put some Velcro on there or whatnot, and you won't need to touch this anymore. Our kit has the map sensor so it's going to change for atmospheric pressure based on the altitude and the temperature outside so you won't need to do constantly mess with this this is just a one-time thing and this eliminates the need, the need for any type of computer this is a uh, like a couple weeks after the fact i've got here a uh i put my plug my helmet in here while we talk um the variator kits on there which actually i'm going to tune it a little bit better i've also done a few changes if you notice here we've got a completely different setup i'll show you that a little later um, this is our 171 cc tune i've got my uh, gauge zip tight on here so what we do this hand tuner has not even it's not even attached right now i'm just doing the base tune for this 171 cc so what i do they hop in here and they change numbers if i need to if you notice this uh see that bounce around there so basically uh this is a step that you will never have to do with our kit this is my base tune i'm setting up everything right now as we uh as we ride, you guys are just getting a behind the scenes. Um, this is where we're at right now, our air fuel ratio. So what we want is just want this to be around 13.3. Now, if I floor it, we're at like 13.3 right there. That's what we want. But this uh, tune that I have, is uh, gonna be the bass tune. But so far this thing runs really, really good. It's taken me a lot of effort. All this hard work is gonna be done. You won't even have the ability to plug it into a computer. It'll, the bass tune, basically you plug it in and you hope that it's good to go. And if you need to make changes, you use this hand tuner. Here's just cruising, just cruising, cruising at about 12.5 AFR, which is nice, 12.7. Not getting any backfiring, so that's good. Nail it! We're at 13.13. Basically, we wanted. Right about 13 is where, is where I want it. And then you can fine tune it with the hand controller. And I always kind of, sometimes I'll just turn this off, make sure it restarts. Starts up nice. I haven't had to make any adjustments here on this run. 
But if I do, then I just make the adjustments on the computer. Let's just do a cruise. Just roll on it slow. No, that's not full throttle. Then we got full throttle. Still looking good. But I do need to do some variator work. I got I need to put a different conscious spring in there. So we now have two uh, kits. We have the 150 cc and the 170 slash 191 cc EFI kit. And then I'll start testing this on the 232. Runs nice though. Just wanted to show you guys that. Okay. I've done a lot of testing and tuning on this 171 and I've also done a lot of CVT transmission work, which as you can see, the bike is put back together. CVT stuff over there, I got the CVT cover off. We're gonna do an ankle biter and a case brace. That way, you know, we can run this open uh, CVT transmission without the frame or the engine case cracking. So I'm gonna put that on there. I've got this thing pretty dang dialed in. I've got the tuner up under here, there. The wires kind of ran down. There's the EFI setup. I can always unzip tie this, pull the tuner up in my hand and tune it if I want. Um, but the tuning's pretty much done. Maybe some fine tuning after I do this uh, CVT work. So uh, let's get started. Step one, I gotta get this exhaust off because this wheel needs to come off. So I'll start doing that. see how close this is how this uh, ring is so close to this caliper I need to just I think pull those studs out that way I can just kind of tilt it real easy so let me do that all right I, I zip tied the brake up there and now it's just swiveling on this let's see if I can pull it off yeah real nice and easy so that's good this is a super slick uh, disc brake setup from Mojo Customs real sweet setup I have the FLP set up on mine. All right, so here's the case brace. This is a Warfab case brace. This is what it looks like, and it's this one's been powder coated. Here's all the hardware. The reason why you need to uh, take the rear wheel off, it's the only way that you're gonna get this on over your case here. Just like that. See how that comes around? And you got all that extra added protection back here. If this, there's no way that this is gonna crack. And if it does, you still have this protection. So here's our uh, case brace pieces. Here's our ankle biter pieces. This is gonna allow us to expose the belt drive and make it look nice. So what I need to do is, uh, this is the, like the beauty plate. What I need to do is take this guy before I do the case brace come around here and uh, this is gonna go right it's like the backing plate part so you don't see all this ugly like exposed machined stuff there so I need to put that on and then this will go on top of it this uh, warfab piece uh oh I set my alarm because there is a lens that I'm bidding on. So we got seven minutes left. I'm gonna bid. Um, so on Amazon, they're going for like 340. I'll, I'll bid 320. All right, there it goes. I'm gonna, I changed my bid. I'm gonna bid 332.70. That's gonna be my new bid. All right. Place it. Confirm. 260 is the highest bid. Three, two, one. 
Yeah! Oh my God, I'm the winner. That is sweet. I've got a good price on that. You, that my content's gonna get even better because I got even a better sweet lens. Anyway, I'm out of time for today. Come back tomorrow, finish this up. Go on a little test ride, take you guys along and uh, show you how my tune went. Oh yeah. Oh geez, new day. If it's not raining, it's snowing, if, uh, the weather is just always 30% chance of rain, 30% chance of snow, 30% chance of sunshine. Let me move these bikes and I'll get back to work for today. This is gonna go up underneath the day sprays. Real nice and easy. Here you are. That is sweet. I gotta start this to get this all tightened up, but that looks killer. Case brace for safety, ankle biter for cosmetics. Oh, yeah. I swear to God, this never gets old. Freaking sweet ruckus, sweet, pristine parts. I mean, if you work on a car, my hands are gonna be caked. I just love this. I love it. I'm gonna put this wheel back on. Damn. That looks sweet. There's only one good reason for rain and it's not for riding. Trying to see if I set up out. The hand tuner is not plugged in at all right now. Just because uh, my tune has to be absolutely perfect with no hand tuner when it leaves. The hand tuner is made for fine tuning based on the unit. So basically, the base tune is set on this bike. Yeah, I might do is I might do a little bit lighter on the rollers. Feels good though. It's cold out right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it. I'll do some more tuning later this week. Don't forget, you can buy any of these parts from us here at Rolling Wrench that I installed. And uh, anything uh, I could build a bike for you too if you want. Check out our website, rollingranchdenver.com.